Accountability measures carry very high stakes. Accreditors and payers, or at least CMS, have worked together to develop highly rigorous standards. Everyday practice and doing what works for nursing care is not nearly so standard. Yet, we aim to provide nursing care using the best available evidence. The criteria for measuring what we do and if it makes a difference remains challenging, but we can do it. Process measures tell us if the evidence-based practice has happened, assuming that the criteria actually reflects the evidence, and provides opportunity, if measured, to improve the process. Patient outcomes are what we aim for, but I do uh, remind you that outcomes often need to be risk-adjusted and need uh, some further work. This isn't to say, though, that we shouldn't measure outcomes. We certainly should, but we need to bear in mind that risk adjustment may be important. How do we use data for measurement to improve practice? Does our obsession with auditing process and outcome work to actually enhance evidence uptake and care and the use of evidence-based guidelines? In other words, if we use the science of implementation, can we improve process? This figure represents the findings from a systematic review about the effectiveness of audit and feedback on health professionals using evidence-based processes and on patient outcomes. This was a systematic review of 49 randomized controlled trials, that's lots of studies far from a single study, and included 82 comparisons. In general, while the magnitude of the effect wasn't large, the soundness of the evidence is moderate. And so when we use audit and feedback, we need to consider these recommendations about what works from this systematic review. First, audit and feedback will have a bigger impact when baseline performance is lower. When giving feedback, the targets and the actions the person needs to take need to be clear and explicit. Third, feedback should be provided in both written and verbal ways and that feedback has to happen generally more than once. Finally, it's better if the person giving the feedback is a colleague or a supervisor. So these are maybe sounding common sense, but they're what the evidence says works best when we use audit and feedback. Given these sources of evidence, the recommendation for what makes a solid accountability standard and what the evidence says about how to use audit and feedback to improve uptake of evidence, what should you look for when you're looking for tools and approaches? First, let's talk a little bit about the evidence source. Remember, the evidence should be strong both in terms of its quality or its rigor and its so what factor, that is the magnitude of the effect. Ideally, the evidence to support what works is at the point of care. The information should be easy to access, both, both in terms of the technology used to reach it and the intellectual energy that you need to use it. The sources should be transparent, that is, the evidence of the evidence should be available to the person using it. And the strategy to find the best available evidence, what went into finding and rating and saying this is what you ought to do, that should also be available to the decision makers. The criteria needs to capture the process. So the audit criteria needs to represent the evidence. We shouldn't be looking at the evidence and then creating other criteria. They should be linked. They should be looking at the very same thing. The criteria must also be directly observable. Since most compliance reporting is in the form of rates, you need to know what the numerator should be and what the denominator should be. And finally, the auditor must have a, a clear present or absent option to measure. It should be very clear if something is happening or not. Other ideal criteria relate to capturing the process include you need to make the audit process efficient. Handheld devices with easy to use data collection tools are ideal. The analysis of the data should be easy. A couple of clicks would be really great rather than having to have in-depth knowledge, say, of Excel. Feedback works best when it is immediate and when it can be graphically displayed in an easy to understand manner. The audit process needs to be fully scalable. 
from unit to whole organization to allow for both internal process improvement and learning and external benchmarking. In order to meet the downstream criteria I mentioned, the audit should be based on processes that are clearly linked to outcomes. Using directly observable metrics and not proxies, for example, observing that full prairie precaution was used rather than counting inventory is an example of a proxy measure, the counting inventory versus actually seeing if full barrier was used. Use standard evidence-based criteria, yet you need to be able to customize those to the context. But be cautious, you don't want to undo the evidence in their effort to be uh, more contextually relevant. For example, you may want to identify whether the information can be found and where it can be found, but not change the criteria itself. For example, if the routine is to document when a urinary catheter was inserted on a tape around the catheter to determine insertion in dwell days, that's okay, but it isn't okay to eliminate the criteria that the catheter is discontinued, say, by post-op day one. 